Welcome back. Today we're diving into a key immunosuppressant used across rheumatology and transplant medicine, Celsept, also known as mycophenolate morphetil. If you're a patient, caregiver, or clinician trying to understand how this medication fits into treatment, you're in the right place. Celsept is the brand name for mycophenolate morphetil, originally approved to prevent rejection in kidney, heart, and liver transplants. But over time, its role expanded, especially in autoimmune diseases like lupus nephritis, systemic sclerosis, ANCA-associated vasculitis, dermatomyositis, polymyositis, autoimmune hepatitis, and even some cases of uveitis and psoriasis. Mechanistically, it's a prodrug. Once metabolized, it becomes mycophenolic acid. It works by blocking inosin monophosphate dehydrogenase, or IMPDH, which T and B lymphocytes rely on to produce guanine and nucleotides. By targeting this pathway, CellCEP selectively suppresses lymphocyte proliferation, reducing immune activity without broadly killing off healthy cells. You'll see it prescribed in different forms, 250 mg capsules, 500 mg tablets, an oral suspension, and even IV for hospitalized patients. Typical dosing depends on the condition. For lupus nephritis, two to three grams daily in two doses. For systemic sclerosis associated ILD, around two grams daily. And for transplant recipients, doses are often weight-based and sometimes higher. Side effects, it's generally well tolerated, but not without risks. Common issues include gastrointestinal upset like nausea, diarrhea, and abdominal pain. It can also cause leukopenia and anemia, especially early in treatment. There's increased infection risk, including opportunistic infections and possible liver enzyme elevations. Rare but serious effects include progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy, lymphoma, and birth defects if used during pregnancy. So monitoring is crucial. Most providers recommend routine CBCs and liver function tests every one to three months, depending on where you are in treatment. There are also some key clinical pearls. Take Celsept on an empty stomach to help with absorption. Avoid antacids or supplements that contain magnesium or aluminum. They can reduce its effectiveness. Because it's teratogenic, patients need effective contraception. Live vaccines should be avoided. And in patients on higher doses, prophylaxis for pneumocystis, gyrovechi pneumonia, and monitoring for CMV reactivation should be considered. How does it compare to other options? Versus cyclophosphamide, Celsept is less toxic long-term and preserves fertility. Compared to azathioprine, it may be more effective in lupus nephritis though cost and tolerability differ. Unlike methotrexate, it's safe in patients with renal disease, but it requires more vigilant infection monitoring. And while biologics like rituximab are powerful, Celsept is oral, often more affordable, and plays well in combination regimens. A few final takeaways. Celsept is particularly effective in lupus nephritis and has a strong steroid sparing role. Titration should be slow, especially in patients with GI sensitivity. It's not a cure. Relapses can happen, and it may need to be escalated or combined with other agents. Often it's used as a bridge or maintenance therapy in complex autoimmune conditions. So while it's a versatile and powerful tool, it demands close follow-up, patient education, and individualized care plans. If this helped clarify CellCEP for you or your patients, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more deep dives into rheumatologic therapies.